Hey guys, welcome back or to the channel. This is 803 Garage, and as you can see, it did not rain yesterday, like it said it was. And as you can also tell, it's not pouring rain yet. Oh, okay, so. Got cloudy overcast, we're all good. I'm gonna rip this off, and then uh, we're gonna get to insulating and sheeting, and obviously we're gonna be roofing today too, but we'll get to that later. That's going bye-bye. Yes. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We're just starting the day, and it was supposed to rain last night. It's supposed to be raining today. I'm happy it did neither of that. Although it's kind of funny that I tarped it off finally, and it didn't rain. <laughs> it is what it is. So guys, it, I literally just pulled this off, and it's just started raining. If I zoom in over here, you can see the dump trailer with the water in it that it's being disturbed by water droplets, which is awesome. But it is what it is, so I'm gonna get to it. Uh, I'm gonna put the camera away. Um, I'm gonna finish off this little bit of framing here, just putting in some two by fours, just so I have something to nail to, or screw to rather. I'm gonna be doing using three inch screws all throughout this. And, uh, oh, the rain seems to have stopped. That's good, just a little sprinkle. Telling me to hurry up. Stop doing videos, get to, get to work. Um, so for the first part of this, and will be me re-insulating this. So I'll, I'll insulate this portion here, and then I'll sheet it. Then I'll insulate this portion here, and then again, I will sheet it, and then coming back toward this way. So it'll be three steps of sheeting and insulation. So six steps altogether before we are joined up to this part of the roof, which I will then remove and then continue sheeting because this is three eighths i'm putting three quarters down um tongue and groove just for extra structure and rigidity because i took and put a giant hole in the roof and i always like to put back twice as much as i take out that's just a personal rule of thumb um, it is a bit excessive at times so that being said we're gonna get to it so like i said before i quickly just patched this area had some scrap plastic lying around you're supposed to use the good stuff, the vapor barrier seal, tuck tape. All I had was duct tape, completely different stuff. And then I ran out of that stuff, so I had to use some novelty camouflage duct tape. I don't know if you can tell if it's there or not. And over here, I didn't need to do this, but I kept getting dirt lying underneath there. So instead of going that way, I cleaned it out. It still looks, bot it still looks bad, but at least no more dirt will get in there. As I blow all this out one more time, and then we'll start the, uh, the insulation process. I'm gonna make some measurements. We'll cut the first sheet of ply. I'll cut do all my cuts downstairs and then come upstairs. So then this here will be my landing platform for the next sheets, which I will cut upstairs. We just finished that uh, last bit of framing there and I decided that I'm actually just going to insulate everything all up top here um, so all that coming across this way then across this way and all the nooks and crannies if there's any good little bits and pieces out of this is what I'm gonna fill them all with and then obviously I'm gonna have cutoffs from all of this stuff going into here so I'll be filling it with that as well um, anything left over of this stuff would just go garbage. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna kick it off. I'll probably throw it over here into the pile to be returned to the uh, dump or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. I'm gonna be wearing a respirator and uh, glasses and proper gloves this time instead of like last time. So this stuff right here. And yeah, let's get to let's get after it. The time lapse does a great job of showing how fast you can do this. But this work here took me about two hours to cut and fit and do everything properly. Uh, I ended up using a lot of the older stuff that was still clean. I just shoved it into the nicks and crannies and stuff so I didn't have to break apart the new stuff. 
and then I used the new stuff for the big areas so that it's nice and fluffy and everything like that. There was a couple of pieces that were kind of crushed and over time they will expand. You'll see that later on in the video, but overall I'm pretty daggone happy with it. So the installation portion of the job is complete. Not entirely the greatest. You do some of the scraps to fill this in. And along the sides, I just threw in the old stuff that's going to be exposed to the elements anyways. It doesn't really provide too much mineral value. So all the good stuff's in the center. We'll just take a quick walk around. And now we're going to begin sheeting. Now generally, you want the, uh, the installation to be puffy. So like this one here is from joist to joist, joist to joist. Rafter to rafter, even though they're two by fours. Um, and it's flush, whereas these ones aren't because they're still compacted. Over time, they will expand a little bit, but not really much I can do about that. So I just gently push them in and wherever they sit, they sit. Again, this is a shed. So I keep reminding myself about that. So we're on to the sheeting process. I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna bring up the entire sheet and uh, lay it down wherever it's gonna go. So I can start cutting it. Yeah, because there's a lot of cuts to be in here. Because this roof isn't uh, entirely square. And uh, that's not a fault of me. It's just moved over time. So again, it's a shit. Put them as I bring them up and then keep them across. So I'm gonna start here, cut it, screw it here, cut it, screw it, and whatever it ends up being. But as you can see, since those are four foot marks, the sheet We'll end up being on that side, and that be on this side. And then we have a random piece to cut here, and then we continue on. So that will be interesting. Finally, we're on to actually sheeting the top of the shed. Now, take the first piece there. I got up the ladder without uh, getting caught on the clothesline, which is pretty daggone awesome. I was pretty proud of myself, did it one-handed. And uh, if you look at the video, you'll see that. But I do make a mistake. We're going to get to that in a second. It's a very big newbie mistake and I should know better. So I will be showing you exactly what I did and I'll advise you guys to do it properly. And I end up reusing that piece, flipping it over to the other side there. So no worries, we'll get on to that right now. So guys, because I'm using uh, plywood for the floor, for the roof, just to create more structure, I made a big mistake. You can take a look at the wood. I didn't even think about this when I was doing it because typically I just have, uh, well, I do, I do just use plywood, not tongue and groove. So this is the wrong way. So I'm going to flip it over, put it over there, see where it lines up, and then we're just going to come this way and finish off that piece there. Not really a big deal, just kind of funny. But this is what it looks like. You got the smooth side, and then this will be a rough side. You can hear the difference. Anyways. Back to it. To every problem, there's multiple solutions. So right now I'm just taking it up after I just screwed it down and we're gonna flip it over to the other side where I'm gonna have to do some additional cutting to get it into an appropriate location. Not really a big deal, very easy to do. This is like one of those situations where you're kind of like, oops, all right, no problem. We got this solved already. So very happy that I still have a bit of a brain to fix a simple problem like this. Well, I've got a bit of a downpour, hopefully it'll last too long. Kind of showing you the rain in the uh, wood right there. See if it's going down. That's good. I don't feel like I can get them too wet. But, oh, yeah, but so right now I'm just kind of cutting the board on the angle, the master angle in the uh, soldier. The money is going to be somewhat square as possible. I haven't quite put it in place perfectly, but you can see on the, the cut there and the cut across here that it's made for a much better install. Um, I'm just listening to the rain. So I'm very, very thankful for the canopy. And by canopy, I mean the overhead leaves that I have not cut down and I don't plan to either. Um, so I'm gonna get back to it, screw this all down and uh, work under the rain. Dang it. So we are now at the point to remove the rest of the 3 8 plywood. We will end up reusing this stuff. I have uh, some more shed work to do for the walls on the exterior side of things. 
and probably some stuff to affix this to underneath the shed because I want to actually insulate the floor properly. Um, next we'll be actually putting down the three quarters drywall and the good part about this and I use screws and everything I do is that it, you can re and restuff very very fast. So that time, I actually lost the lost the shoe. Not very comfortable. And I continued on. So this time, I'll reposition the camera. I accidentally had that in, in uh, time last mode. So we're gonna grab one more piece, the four pieces, and you get to see how I do this. Alrighty, lunch break's over, we're back at it. Yes, I changed, but I had a shower. Because when you're working from home, you have that luxury. In case I didn't say before, I know, I'm out of breath because I had to lift this thing. It probably weighs about 100 pounds. Um, that's the membrane. We're going to continue this tongue and groove across there. And then we're going to start building this back this way. I'm assuming that the two sheets, sorry, four sheets that are right here will be enough. Obviously, there'll be some cuts and stuff. And then there'll be some uh, piecing in for that top part there. And we will see how we get to it. So I'm going to flip the camera over and we're going to go on the time lapse just to kind of push this ahead. So the entire plywood project portion of this probably took about four hours approximately. And part of that is when you have a piece of plywood, putting it into a location is everything. You want to maximize the length of the plywood so wherever it sits, it doesn't need to be cut. In some cases, and you'll see it here, I needed an extra 2x4, so I had to slap it in there just so I had a bit more meat to uh, have the sheet bite into, and that kind of happens sometimes. You just go with it and you get it all done. So the plywood is now laid all the way around. Everything's been trimmed up. Any screws that have been forgotten have been found for the most part. One or two is not really a big deal. Next, we'll be getting on to the ice and weather shield. Snow and ice shield, whatever the heck that is. Basically, that's going to create the underlay membrane that I need for the uh, shed roof. And after that, we'll be installing the shingles, but those two things will be in the other video. So if you made it this far, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If any questions about any of this, any of this nonsense of mine, uh, leave your comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!